Good morning, and welcome to First Church Congregational of Methuen, Massachusetts, United Church of Christ. I'm Bill Ingraham. I'm the senior pastor, and I'm honored to see everyone who is here today. Um, those of you who are watching online can't tell, but we're really lopsided today. Everybody's over here. So if I keep looking on this side, it's because everybody's over here. Um, the choir and the congregation about balance each other. Um, it is cold in here. I don't know if I should say the temperature or not. Does that make it feel colder if I do? It's 48 this morning. Last week was 51, so um, colder this week. Uh, we're hoping as the days continue to get warmer that it will be more uh, pleasant in here temperature-wise, but it's also, it is always pleasant in here people-wise, and so I'm grateful for everyone who's attending. It turns out I had spoken in error when I emailed on Friday to the congregation promising that by this week we would have the simulcast in Parish Hall up and running. I was wrong. We actually are missing a piece of equipment to make that happen. So there are some folks who are here today who are sitting in the sun in the back of the room, um, and I hope they're warm, who had believed me when I promised, um, not intentionally falsely, but falsely nonetheless, that we would have the simulcast. We're going to work on getting some equipment to make that work, and so um, your patience is appreciated. And also, it will not be much longer before the temperature will be warmer, and it'll be warmer in here. And when it does warm up, we'll be able to get the furnaces fixed, replaced, um, for next year when the cold comes. So I want to invite Cindy Bateson to come forward right away and make an announcement on our diaper drive, which is going well. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Pastor Bill said, the diaper drive's going quite well. Uh, we had our sex, second collection day yesterday, and we did very well. Um, we took in 569 more diapers for a total of 1,327. And we took in 86 pull-ups for a total of 161, and 672 wipes for a total of 880. We also received um, monetary donations of $120 to also donate. So thank you to everyone who's been so generous. And we do have one more collection day next Saturday from 10 to 12 here at the church. And you can always bring diaper donations to church. I know someone did this morning, so thank you. Our collection as we have it so far is here. Um, and we'll look forward to having more come at the end of this week. Remember, our reason for doing this, joining other agencies in the community that are collecting diapers right now, is, well, first of all, there is always need um, among people who can just make their ends meet. But with the inflation and the, that we're all experiencing and the price of gasoline and food, diapers have become even more out of reach for, for the families whose budgets are least able to handle that. And so, as a church, one of the things we're doing is collecting diapers, pull-ups, um, underwear for children. Thank you to everyone who's helping with that. Well, I have just a couple more announcements. I'll come back over to the center for that. So if you have not yet gotten your newsletter article in, now's the time to do that. Um, I suspect in this room the only one who has is, I, I won't name her because I don't have her permission, but Marilyn Peck always gets her articles done on time. I'm sure hers is in, um, but everybody else, Get your article done, that will be appreciated. The only meeting I'm aware of this week is the nominating committee, which is Monday at 2 p.m. in my office. And those are, those are my announcements today. That's good. Then we'll just briefly share joys and concerns. It is a joy to have the choir back and singing and in such full voice. Um, we're really appreciative of Dr. Grills and his leadership and all of the choir members for being um, able to come and sing. They're actually singing anthems starting today, um, Dr. Grills told me this morning. So I'm really, I'm just so excited to have the choir back. Also, I want to just give a special um, word of gratitude and prayer, uh, although I don't, this wasn't probably supposed to be public, but Dr. Grills has a concert this afternoon he's playing in um, Wellesley, and so we'll hold him in our hearts and our prayers as he prepares for that. Um, 
And I'll just say there are other joys in the room that I I didn't get permission. So I'll just say there are other joys um, here today that we're grateful for. So uh, in our concerns, of course, we continue to pray for people who are grieving. We are aware of members of our church family who are grieving and others as well, remembering that grief is not a destination, it is a journey. And so we hold in our prayers everyone who's grieving the loss of a loved one, whether it's recent or from some distant time, grief still persists in our lives. We pray for everyone who is feeling the pinch of the um, inflation that's happening currently as prices are skyrocketing and doing our part through the diaper drive and the food pantry and in other ways to try to help people have what they need, um, not only to survive, but also to thrive. And of course, we hold in our heart the people of Ukraine Um, And any war-torn part of the world today, praying for peace, praying for justice, um, praying for strength of people to stand up and have their own identity in their own land. On personal notes, prayers for people who are sick, whether it is um, you yourself or someone else. Prayers for people who are living with Um, Any form of substance use disorder, any sort of addiction, prayers for sobriety and the courage to um, follow the steps, seek help, strive to make it a moment at a time. Prayers for people with any expression of mental or emotional illness. Um, And then one I always try to add, prayers for the end of prejudice and hatred and fear, especially with ourselves. (coughs) Pardon me and in the broader world and community, trying to make a difference in how we learn to love and respect everyone, um, regardless of what differences there may be among us. Those are the joys and concerns that I have for today. I know that there are always others that we have in our hearts, and so we hold those up to God this day as well um, as we begin our service officially with the call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. We're more than halfway through. Week by week, we have sought a new sense of God's call to us. We continue our focus upon how best to live faithfully every day. We are ready to be renewed, remade even, by God's intentions. We ground ourselves in Christ's teachings and in being his disciples. We strive for a faith that leads us in Christ's footsteps day by day.
Please join me in the morning prayer. We give you thanks, loving Heavenly God, for calling us together in this time of worship. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. Inspire us through music and prayers, through words spoken and heard, and in the ponderings of our hearts. Teach us to live anew as disciples of Jesus, following faithfully in all his days, through whatever life may bring our way. These things we ask in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. And it's children's time. I don't know. Don't, kids don't have to if they don't want to, but they're invited to. Okay, that's good. I'll just do, uh, so I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see, let me move over here. Okay, so I wanted to talk about how we see things. So sometimes we see things from up high. In fact, this is the highest place you can see things from in our room. And sometimes... We see things from lower. Sometimes we see things from one side. Sometimes we see things from another side. Sometimes we see things looking up. Sometimes we see things looking through. There's lots of different ways we see things. And that's just amazing. I love it so much. I like being in a high place and looking down and seeing things I can't see from somewhere else. And I like sitting still and watching people move around me. In fact, sometimes, back before the pandemic, when you'd be like in a mall or a busy place in a park, and you sit there and you watch people go by, I would have fun in my brain making up stories about people. That person went to school at this place. That person really likes to do this thing. That person is really a famous actor, but we don't know it. That person sings beautifully. That person is left-handed. All sorts of silly things I would make up about people as I saw them. Where we stand, where we sit, where we look can give us different views. Well, as people of faith, we think God helps us see things differently too. So God can give us new eyes to see other people with love God can give us new eyes to see ourselves and recognize how much God loves us. God can give us new eyes to look at the world and see something completely different and realize that we can work to make the world a better place, to help people feel more loved, to help God's goodness be sensed, to help hungry people have food, to help lonely people have somebody to be with them. We can see things from different angles and different ways. And it's a blessing because God helps us to see possibilities too. Okay, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. We're going to all pray together. This is a repeat after me prayer. Let's pray together. Dear God, open our eyes. Help us to see and know what you want us to know that we can live and be faithful. Amen. Thank you.
I just think there should be some clapping right now. I am. Um, every step through the pandemic is a blessing, and I find myself crying this morning because I am so grateful for the choir to be back and for the good work of our new organist and choir director. Um, I'm grateful for a lot of other things, too. All of you, I'm grateful. Um, but they're the ones who made me cry in a good way. We come now to our time of prayer together. I invite you to join me as we pray. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, here we are gathered to praise your name, to sing hymns, to listen to words of Scripture, ancient words of Scripture, to hear words dutifully proclaimed, to visit with one another, to laugh, to cry, to be your people together. Many of us in this room, in this time, many of us in countless other places, many of us in homes and at work and in other places where we're able to be a part of this service, each of us seeking to know seeking to know your love, seeking to know your will and your ways, seeking to know your blessing for our lives and for others, seeking to know how we faithfully can live through difficult times and joyful times, seeking to know how we can be a part of your good intention on earth right now as your heavenly realm already is being established. Help us, God. Help us to be grounded in your love and compassion. Help us, God, to be empowered by your mercy and your word for us and your will that drives not only our thoughts and our perceptions, but also our actions and how we are present in the world. Help us, God, to be your faithful people and to serve you always and to make your heavenly realm known. We do come as our whole selves. We bring with us all of our wounds, all of our worries, all of our joys, all of our concerns. Some wounds that are old and date back across a lifetime, maybe even generations. Some that are based in physical illness or emotional distress or addictive patterns or behaviors, um, all these wounds, all these things in need of healing, we offer to you now and ask your blessing and ask for your healing power. Grateful for doctors, grateful for um, nurses, physicians, assistants, all the people in healing professions, grateful for therapists, grateful for 12-step uh, programs, grateful for anyone who is about the work of offering healing of body, mind, or spirit. We are grateful and we will, um, we pray, be attending to things they would have us do to be well and strong. We also pray for people who are grieving aware of our own losses and the deep hurt and pain that can bring and trusting in your love that conquers all, your presence that holds us for all eternity and your promise that nothing can separate us from you or from your love, us or any of your children. And we pray for this church Grateful for the faithfulness that has seen us through for generation after generation and guides us now as we seek to live in the present moment and into the future, whatever it might bring. Help us, God, as a people of faith to be loving, to be hopeful, to be open to your healing power, to be inspired for following in the ways of Jesus and to serve you wherever you might lead us, both in this place and in the world around us. Hear now the silent prayers we offer in Christ's name.
We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now take a moment, as we do each week, to offer God our tithes and our gifts. For those who are watching online, a link has appeared on the bottom of the screen for you to know um, how you can give to or through this church. Um, people in the room, the ushers are about to pass the plates. Above all else, let us be grateful that God has blessed us with such abundance that we have the capacity to give in turn, to do good for others. I invite the ushers to come forward.
We thank you, God, for countless blessings showered upon us day after day and ask you to help us to be faithful that we may share what we have too, all to do your will in the world around us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May the living word of God speak to us through these ancient words of scripture. It just made me crazy. I got an 81 on everything, every paper, every test, every essay, anything we wrote in that class, I got an 81. Not from both professors, just from one. One professor, um, my grade would be 91, 87, 95, 81. But from this other professor, every single time, 81. It was the big Bible class that we took in seminary. And so it went both semesters. It was taught by two professors, uh, actually three professors the second semester, a Hebrew Bible professor and a Christian scripture professor, um, two of the top biblical scholars around were teaching this class. They were just amazing. But one of them, whose name I'm not going to (laughs) name, had decided that I was an 81 student. And so that's what I got every time. Every time, 81. And I got more and more frustrated as we went along. And it's a funny thing because I I didn't, it wasn't until graduate school that I had a sense that I was a good student. That's because I had never had to work that hard before. In um, public schools, it was great. I had great teachers. I did well on some classes, not well on other classes. In college, likewise, did well on some, not well on others. I didn't have amazing grades, but I didn't have bad grades. I did fine probably because I was not trying that hard, so I just did fine. But I got to seminary, and I got challenged. It was hard. I mean, at the very start, they were teaching on this level of understanding, and I came in with this level of knowledge, and so I was having to work to build my knowledge to get up where I could even understand what they were talking about. But in this Bible class, no matter how hard I worked, One professor always gave me an 81. So one day I was just tired of it. And so I left the dorm where I lived where I had just been complaining to everybody who would hear me on the hall. Not for the first time. I know it's a surprise that I would talk and complain. But I I, I did in those days. I was less mature than I am now. I was complaining. And I left. And I went over. It was office hours. And I went into the building where this professor had her office. And I went up the stairs to the third floor, which is where her office was. And I went over. And I went in, and it was the first time I'd ever been in her office. And I was amazed at the long rows of books. It was long and narrow. And all the way down, floor to ceiling, in a very high office, there were books. And there she sat behind her desk with her glasses like this, 
reading something that looked ancient. And I almost lost my nerve. But I said to her, I called her by her name, which I'm not going to now. I'll call her Dr. So-and-so. I said, Dr. So-and-so, I just need to talk to you. And she said, what is it, Bill? I said, I get an 81 on everything I write for you, whether it's a, my voice was shaking, whether it's a quiz, whether it's a paper, no matter what it is, an essay, I get an 81. I cannot believe that I am that consistent. And she said, I don't believe you are. <laughs> so then, of course, I was worried because, you know, an 81 is not bad. <laughs> what, if, what if I deserved less in her eyes? But the next paper, I got an 86. And the essay after that, I got an 89. And when the semester was over, I got a 91, which at that seminary was a pretty doggone high grade. I had talked to her and kind of helped her to see that she was focused in on this way. And while it might have been true what she perceived, it didn't contain all of my potential. And who knows, maybe by getting upset and frustrated, I actually became a better student and worked harder to make sure that my work was better than an 81. I just remember being scared that it would end up being worse than an 81. But by the end, I received all sorts of grades from her and sometimes high marks. And so from that experience, I decided I did not want to be one of those people who puts folks into a pigeonhole and decides that's who they are and what they can do and can't see anything else. It's so easy to do. And, and in fact, I understand why we do it. There's, there's so much in the world around us and so much to perceive and understand. It's really easy to come up with categories of things that we place people or organizations or objects into. This is something that's good. This is someone who is bad. This is something I respect. This is someone um, I love. This is someone who annoys me, whatever it might be. We come up with these categories for people, for organizations, for objects, and then once we've made our judgments, those people stay in that very place. And so I've tried very hard not to make that mistake because I'd had the experience in seminary of a professor who had pigeonholed me and not seen my potential or encouraged my potential. So how do we how do we maintain the practice, the discipline of seeing potential in other people? The habit, the daily pattern of seeing where things could be and might go so that we have a chance of getting to better places together. That's one of the challenges we face in this very moment. I speak once in a while about the pandemic and the weight that it has had on so many of us and how even now we can feel so uh, discouraged and disheartened even on beautiful sunshiny days when all the potential of the world seems in front of us. There is a weariness and a gray cloud that hovers over many of us. And as a church, that can be a reality as well. There are some programs that are coming back and we're doing them now. The choir, the biggest example we can make other programs that have not started back yet, Christian education, outreach that we have continued doing, but in different ways, some new things like the diaper drive going on right now, yet knowing in the community around us there are so many needs that are begging to be met, so many folks who do not have a sense of being loved and cared for, so many people who are wandering without a sense of divine love and purpose to guide them and see them through. It would be easy for us to have blinders on the discouraging moments we may feel in the present and not be able to see the hopeful future filled with God's many possibilities. I admire how this church for almost three centuries has sought to serve God in this community but our faithfulness and our effectiveness has never been lived only looking backward into the past, but also looking 
forward into God's unknown future, being willing to step out in Christ's name and seek to live as God's own faithful people, meeting the needs of this community and the world around us. I love today's passage from um, Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Although you've heard me talk about it before, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians we think is a letter. It, it has um, integrity as a written unit. 2 Corinthians we think is multiple letters that got put together by some editor or group of editors at some time um, when the scriptures were being assembled. And so we look at this ancient document that has been um, uh, amalgamated by some other leaders in our church's ancient history. And then we hear words translated to us from um, some group of scholars that applied their uh, understanding, their perceptions, maybe even their blinders, and we try to make sense of it and understand it today. But this passage, this passage is one that I think may resonate with us, or at least it can. It certainly resonates with me. The way I remember it is from the Revised Standard Version, not the new Revised Standard Version, which is here, but I can quote parts of it and have been able to since I was a child. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creature. Behold, old things have passed away. All things have become new. And all things come from God who has reconciled us to God's self in Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation. That word appears, it's only used twice in the New Testament, and it's both by Paul. It's an unusual theological concept. Paul's notion here is that God in Christ was reconciling, reconciling. Um, so you can reconcile your accounts and make sure all the numbers are, are reflected right. You can reconcile a difference between you and somebody who uh, you have been separated from. You can uh, reconcile and make right something that has been a traditional injustice. God was in Christ reconciling the world to God's self. God reaching out across any abyss that would divide us from a sense of God's good intention, across any dynamic that would keep us from knowing ourselves and others as God's beloved children, across any distance that would keep us from striving to live according to God's purpose. God was in Christ reconciling the world to God's self and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Our task in seeking to live into the future through this present moment to strive to reconcile ourselves and others to God in love, trusting God's goodness to see us through and get us to where we need to be. And furthermore, our our strong sense that already God is at work among us and our task is to recognize the goodness of God calling us, pulling us together and live inspired by it, affording that same love and sense to others. I wonder... Sometimes, if we could just figure out a way to help others see God's goodness and love in a way that would break through for them and give them an understanding that could inspire them to live in a different way, what a difference the world would see if we could help to make that happen. It's going to feel a little disjointed, but I want to end with an old um, Garrison Keeler story. 
He talked about a big 4th of July celebration in Lake Wobegon where everybody got together in town and they all wore either white clothing or red clothing or blue clothing. And there on Main Street, they formed themselves, somebody helped them to make the American flag. And somebody went up into the top of the highest building in downtown and looked down on them and says, oh, that looks great. And they, they were just so excited that they realized that down in the flag, nobody could see it. So they started, but they couldn't all come up to see it because if they all came up to see it, it wouldn't exist anymore. So they started bringing up one person at a time to go up on top of this tall building and look down and see the beautiful flag and say, yeah, that's beautiful. Then they had to go down the stairs and get in their place. The next person went up and looked down. Oh, that's gorgeous. And bit by bit, finally, everybody got to see it and they could know what a beautiful thing they had done. What if, what if we saw our job as a church from this perspective we have sitting up on top of this hill where we've been for a very long time, observing the beauty of God all around us, the love of God for each and every person, including you and including me, the call of God to empower the powerless, to heal the broken, to bring justice to those who do not know justice. What if what if we could be so filled with a sense of a vision of God's love for all creation that we could invite people to see it too? So bit by bit, one by one, we all could come to know and to experience and to make real the love of God for all God's people everywhere. Please pray with me. Loving, merciful, gracious God, we give you thanks that you help us to see your work of reconciliation among us and all the world. Help us on your behalf to live and be reconciling people that make your love and compassion known for all in the world. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I know the camera's there, but I'm going to give the benediction this way. Go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Filled with the music which is God's song for your heart. And inspired to live in the world in such a way that others will come to know they are loved too. Amen.
Thank you.